Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at why it's called going Dutch when you pay for yourself. The idea of paying for yourself when out with friends being referred to as some expression including the word Dutch seemingly incorrectly is often attributed to the fact that for several centuries beginning in the 17th, the word Dutch has had a negative connotation in English, variously meaning cheap, duplicitous, alcoholic, poor, treacherous, selfish, or just plain wrong. The derogatory usage of Dutch stems from animosity between the English and the Dutch due to their competing positions as naval powers, which would ultimately erupt into full-on wars, mostly for at sea. It's no surprise then that by the middle of the 17th century, when war broke out, the English had come up with some choice derogatory expressions related to their rivals. Specifically, by 1654, the first derogatory uses of Dutch began appearing in print, such as R. Whitcock's Warrior. The contract is not like Dutch bargains made in drink. Soon, phrases such as Dutch Palace, 1687, meaning low class, and Dutch Reckoning, 1699, meaning poor accounting, particularly a bill that doesn't include details and potentially becomes bigger if you question it, were also appearing. That said, contrary to what is often said, none of this appears to have anything to do with the various Dutch expressions meaning to pay for oneself. In fact, the origin of this expression might even have little to do with what we think of today as Dutch at all. In the 17th and 18th centuries, many German-speaking groups immigrated to the United States. For those that settled in Pennsylvania, they became known as Pennsylvania Dutch. As for why these German-speaking people were called this in the first place, well, for some time in English, High Dutch generally referred to people from parts of Germany and in nearby mountainous regions, and Low Dutch got applied to people from the Netherlands, at a time with these regions being part of the Holy Roman Empire. Even after they got their respective independence, the naming scheme still stuck around for a while in certain places like America. In the United States, it would seem that the Pennsylvania Dutch had a reputation for never owing anyone anything, to the point that, even with a group of friends in a tavern, the reputation was that each person would pay his own bill. Whether this reputation is wholly accurate or not, in the United States, various phrases that included the word Dutch became synonymous with this characteristic, and eventually different variations with the meaning began to appear in print, including Dutch Treat, 1873, Dutch Lunch, 1897, and Go. Dutch from 1914. For instance, the earliest documented instance of the first of these line of expressions appeared in the Daily Democrat on June 27, 1873, stating, If our temperance friends could institute what is called the Dutch treat into our saloons, each man paying his reckoning, it would be a long step towards reforming in drinking to excess. The next up was the Dutch lunch, with the first known instance appearing in the Fort Wayne Morning Journal on October 24, 1897. Perhaps you have a a fatter pocketbook than some of the other fellows. I, for instance, can't afford to buy two tickets every time I go. So some of the boys and I go on the Dutch lunch plan, everybody for himself. Interestingly, at the same time these expressions were taking on their figurative sense, they were also occasionally used literally, as in describing the food eaten by the Pennsylvania Dutch. To wit, an 1894 newspaper report found by esteemed etymologist Michael Quinion of the trusted phenomenal World Wise Words notes that a Dutch supper should include rye bread, cabbage salad, wienerwursts, and beer, consistently expressive of the Vaterland. Given that this line of Dutch something expressions didn't appear until the late 19th to early 20th centuries, that they first appeared in the United States rather than Britain, that they seem in many cases to be referring to Pennsylvania Dutch and they aren't inherently derogatory, it's thought by many etymologists that, contrary to what is often said, these expressions probably had nothing to do with the former lineup of derogatory Dutch something expressions invented by the British a couple of centuries before. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, if you're looking for a great book to read that is somewhat similar to this article, please do check out Why is Q Always Followed by You, which has some um, a lot more information kind of like what we covered in this video. There's a link to it in the description below. I'd also like to take this moment to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting us and becoming a Patreon, please do consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out. We've got loads of great perks lined up as well, so please do go check that out and as always thank you for watching